Hello and welcome to the Sound on Sound recording and mixing podcast channel. I am Eddie Bazil. Although reverb, chorus and delay are the go-to effects for mix engineers, we sound designers have always opted for phases, as they can color sounds in ways that no other effects unit can. In this podcast, I'm going to demonstrate how to take a staid and unexciting synth pad sound that sounds both central and almost mono and spruce it up by adding width and a whispery motion using a phaser. But to effectively achieve this goal, we first need to explore how phasers work. A phaser or phase shifter works by duplicating the input signal and passing the copied signal through an all pass filter. This filter allows all frequencies to pass through, but alters the phase of the signal. The amount of phase shift depends on the set frequency. When the phase shifted signal is recombined with the dry signal, some frequencies are cancelled while others are reinforced, creating peaks and troughs that are not always harmonically related, an effect known as comb filtering. If another all-pass filter is introduced into the signal path, the combined two all-pass filters create a notch, a single tooth of a comb filter. Phasers use a series of all-pass filters, also referred to as stages or networks. And when connected in series, these create a series of non-harmonically related notch filters, which are simply calculated by halving the number of stages used. So a four-stage phaser will have two notches, and so on. Phasers will use a modulator to alter the degree of phase shifting that takes place, and this results in the notch filters being moved up and down the frequency spectrum, creating the whooshing effect we commonly associate with phasers. Some phasers will feature a width or spread function. This can range from controlling the intensity of modulation between lower and higher frequencies, or controlling the width of the phase signal. The best approach in understanding how each parameter can affect changes in the audio being processed is to run a few simple examples using the freeware phaser from Blue Cat Audio. Once we have gone through some of these before and after examples, I'll dive into the meat of this podcast. Here is the first example. First there's a dry sound, followed by the sound process with two stages of filtering, and then with 18 stages of filtering you will hear what a dramatic difference the number of stages makes to the sound. And now with two stages. And now with 18 stages. More stages equate to a more phased effect, and sometimes it pays dividends to start with fewer stages and work up from there as the effect can vary quite dramatically in behavior when scanning through the number of stages. This is one of those let the ear decide moments. I've left the spread function at 100% so you can hear the phaser effects in full motion. If you want the effect to remain mono and centered, you can easily achieve this by dropping the spread function to zero. More on this later. Example two demonstrates how the modulator rate, in this instance, a sine LFO, affects the motion of the phaser on a vocal line. First, as dry and unprocessed, followed with a gentle LFO rate of 20 Hertz, and finally with an LFO rate of one kilohertz. He'll be driving you insane. And now with the LFO rate at 20 hertz. He'll be driving you insane. And now with the LFO rate at 1 kilohertz. He'll be driving you insane. Modulator shapes and rates lie in the hearts of all phaser effects. They're not only integral in the shaping of the phaser effect, but reign supreme when it comes to stereo spreading and panning the sound being processed. The next example demonstrates how useful a tool the width spread function is when shaping the phase signal. However, the audio needs to be in stereo to benefit from the widening process. He'll become your weekend lover. 
And now with 0% spread, you become your weekend lover. And now at 100% spread, you become your weekend lover. With the 0% setting for the spread function, the phaser effect is represented as mono and central. With a 100% spread setting, the audio is clearly in stereo and widened. By using a modulator and working with low LFO rates, stereo panning phaser effects can be achieved quite easily and effectively. Let's move on to example 3, which demonstrates how to add an evolving, yet detuned texture to a Rhodes line by adopting a high LFO rate. In this instance, 4.2 kHz, and a generous amount of depth. Although exaggerated, the detuning effect actually adds something to the Rhodes line that immediately grabs the listener's attention. This is the Rhodes sound, dry. And this is the Rhodes sound with a 4.2 kHz rate for the LFO and 60% depth. probably familiar with these types of phaser effects as they're the most commonly used types when working with vocals, drum beats and keyboard lines within a mix context. Quite often we use effects exactly as they are prescribed and the phaser effect is instantly recognized when used as a swirling and whooshing type of effect. However, for more creative phasing we need to explore a phaser effect that affords us a little more weaponry in the shaping and editing department. A well-specified modulation matrix coupled with detailed control over filter behavior allows the phaser to be used as a serious sound design tool. If delay and reverb are applied to the phaser effect, then more interesting and complex textures can be created. I will stagger the following examples by first processing a dry and uninteresting pad sound with a phaser. This will be followed with a very cool delay trick that will highlight specific phased frequencies and end with a deep and wide reverb effect. I will end by automating both the delay and reverb effects with emphasis on time-based modulation. This will result in an evolving motion that moves both back and front and left to right. In the first example, I'm using Sound Toys Phase Mistress to process a dry and uninteresting pad sound, generated using NI's Massive Synth VSTi. Phase Mistress is a phaser effect on steroids. It comes with a detailed and well-presented modulation matrix that allows the user to craft not only complex phaser effects, but to create a multitude of additional dynamic effects that other phaser effects cannot match. And now, the pad sound, phased using Sound Toys Phase Mistress. The phaser effect is very gentle as I opted to use a rhythmic modulator with a ramp up shape as the source modulator as opposed to the traditional sine and triangle LFO shapes that are usually offered with phaser effects. I have timed or rather loop cycled the rhythmic modulator to modulate very slowly across four bars. In effect I have opted for a four bar loop to act as the modulator rate. This allows for a sweeping and swelling phaser texture. I decided on 12 stages as I felt it was perfect for this type of evolving texture. I did push the filter resonance to the 9 setting to accommodate the delay filter trick that comes next. In the next example, I'm using Fab Filter's Timeless 2 delay effect. The modulation matrix that Timeless provides is to die for. 
almost all time-related effects can be created and manipulated using this single effects processor. The trick I mentioned earlier is quite simple. The aim is not to actually delay the audio signal, but to modulate two filters with narrow bandwidths, one high pass and one low pass, to peak and play at different intervals. This results in two distinct frequency ranges peaking above the audio whilst moving against each other, inversely and summed across the entire frequency spectrum. It sounds complex, but it's actually very easy to instigate. Both filters are modulated using sine LFOs with varying rates and using a glide function to allow for smooth transitions. One LFO rises to a positive value, while the other LFO drops to a negative value. The low pass filter peaks, while the high pass filter attenuates and vice versa. They are both then modulated via the modulation matrix to move ever so slightly left to right across the frequency spectrum. This is achieved by delaying the LFO rates using an envelope generator. This results in different phase frequencies being reinforced and highlighted while moving across a limited spectrum. The auditory result is that these two filters sound as if they're phasing against each other. This effect really becomes prominent when the reverb is introduced into the next equation. More on that later. Let's have a listen to the pad sound that's delayed and filtered. When using a phaser effect in series with a delay effect, it's important that any time-based processes are kept to one processor and not spread across both unless each processor is trying to achieve something different. Widening a sound twice does not yield any useful results and actually sounds unnatural. Motion across the left and right stereo field can play havoc with modulated filters that are also moving across the same field. For the next example, I'm using Eventide's black hole reverb effect. I'm using it as an insert and the final effect in the chain. I've selected a fully wet mix and I've filtered the reverb to exist in a small frequency range that highlights the filter peak shifting trick provided by the delay effect. Feedback is fixed at zero as I'm not aiming for a wet reverb type of texture, but rather to affect spatial presence for the phase sound. So have a listen to this example. The pad sound is both filtered and run through the reverb. The reverb sounds very wet and overpowering and actually takes away from the filter peaking trick. If anything, the reverb has compromised both the phaser effect and the overall clarity. This is where the next and most important processing takes place, that of automation. In this next example, I've automated the delay effect to pronounce the modulated filter peaks by modulating the amounts for both filters. This is then followed with the reverb mix being automated from dry to fully wet. The critical aspect of automating both of these effects simultaneously is to make sure that when the filters peak, the reverb reduces the wet mix to completely dry. And when the filter peaks start to move and attenuate, the reverb mix bursts into 100% wet mode. This interaction between the two lanes of effects automation results in both depth being achieved and left to right motion being highlighted. Have a listen to the pad sound that's automated with both effects.
And finally, so you can gauge what all the effects chained in series sound like, I've added a simple drum beat to play over 16 bars. Listen to how the phaser delay and reverb effects add a sense of depth and motion to a staid and boring pad sound. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. This has been Eddie Bazil for Sound on Sound. Thank you for listening. And be sure to check out the show notes page for this episode, where you'll find further information along with web links and details of all the other episodes. Oh, and just before you go, let me point you to the soundonsound.com forward slash podcasts website page, where you can explore what's playing on our other channels. <laughs>